Uh, this is John from Tulsa Rocks. I'm here with Enslaved by Fear, who's playing tonight at Undercurrent. How are you all doing tonight? Pretty doing good. Awesome. I'm doing great. Fucking awesome. Good. So what do you all have <laughs> in line for your future coming up? Um, well, we got, obviously, we're playing tonight here at the Undercurrent. We'll be in Oklahoma City tomorrow night at Leon's Lounge with Silence the Messenger and Years Since the Storm on tour. Uh, the other opener is uh, Within All Reason, I believe. Yeah. And then, of course, the big one, Rock, Oklahoma next weekend. Rock, yes, that's, that's great for y'all playing, uh, what is it, the Axis stage? Yeah, we'll be opening up the Axis stage Friday at noon. Be the first band of the festival to get things kicked off the right way. Noon, right in the middle of the sun. Yeah. This fat boy's gonna sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, you know, the one that does the least sweats the most. It's true. <laughs> That's not true. I'm a drummer. <laughs> I work hard. By sitting on his ass. By sitting on his ass. This is <laughs> correct. At least they get to take their shirts off. I have to be up there fully clothed. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. It would be more of an entertainment show if they keep their clothes on and you take your clothes off. Oh, yeah. I bet everybody would love that. Oh, of course. <laughs> but let's get down to some, like, let's get down to some business. What actually has put Enslaved by Fear where they are today, and what is the driving force behind Enslaved by Fear? That's a tough one. Uh, just, I mean, we got Tristan. We call him the architect. The little Tristan. Hey, hey this man. Tristan. Say hi again. Hello. <laughs> Make it so they can hear you. But, I mean, he, he, he's written most of the music, um, uh, including uh, some of the local uh, vocals for Breaking Down, a song that we've got coming up in the future, but we won't be playing yet. Um, other than that, it's just the hard work that all these guys have put in, and when we're not constantly on the road playing shows, we're in the studio practicing three times a week. And, and three, to, three times a week that you all practice. Three times a week. And, and it also has to do a lot with our, our Tulsa scene. We've got a lot of people here who support us, you know, Axis Entertainment, Steve Murdoch, the places like the Undercurrent, you know, that really support and, and give us a chance to have somewhere to play where people can hear us. I mean, that, that's a big part of it. And in Tulsa, is it a problem of finding a, a venue that does support local music? Especially local metal. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier for rock bands or soft rock or country bands to find somewhere to play. But for our genre uh, of metal, it's really difficult to find somebody to open their doors and say, yes, come play here, uh, as opposed to most places who want, you know, lounge music. Lounge music? Is that what you all call yourselves, lounge music? I call it lounge music. I think we're easy listening, but everybody else thinks we're pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since we're right here, I mean, what has really, I mean, what has drawn all of you together to become enslaved by fear? I can answer that one pretty easily. I think that really it's, we all have a, a really big backstory. Little Tristan, TJ, and Ben lost their cousin who was a phenomenal guitar player. I lost my grandfather who taught me. Braxton and Roxy obviously have their own backstories. I don't know all of them just yet, but I think that that's what's kind of tied us all together into doing this music and getting our whole entire hearts out into the music. I can answer for me and Braxton partially. Um, <clears throat> for me, at least, I know my brother's been working at this for years. He's been trying to get his music out there, his story, and I've always just loved music. It's been a part of my life forever, and so it's an honor for me to be with this band, just to be able to be a part of it. But it's an even bigger honor for me to be able to help my brother reach his dream because he's been working at this so hard for so long, and I'm just glad that I can help him get there. I mean, yes, Brax, you have been in this for quite a few years, haven't you? Yeah, I've been in and out of the Tulsa scene, either working for promoters or playing for bands. Normally a bass player. This is my first time getting to do some vackles. Some vackles? Some vackles. Vackles. <laughs> Let's not bypass the fact that, you know, this band is pretty well related. Uh, me, uh, the architect, and Tony are, are biological brothers. Braxton and, and Roxy here are biological brother and sister. And, and we have our, our very 
awesome is he rhythm. Child? Who, who <laughs> he kind of got adopted into the family. He was actually one of the founding members even before I joined. Um, him and, and the other Tristan and Tony, they started this band years ago, and it wasn't until about a year and a month ago that I stepped in and we brought in Braxton and actually started getting stuff off the ground. Now, was that how long Enslaved by Fear has been together, a, a year or so? Um, yeah, it's been about a year and a half that we've been knuckled down working to get towards a common goal. The band as, the band as it is now. The band as it is now. Yeah. Uh, be- beforehand, really what we were doing is we were just family events, just playing at the band shell. We even played at the go-kart track in Bartlesville, and that was awesome. And I didn't get an invite for go-karts? No. <laughs> Man, I thought I, I thought I was friends with y'all, and y'all didn't invite me for go karts. I, I was back in Oregon at the time, man. I'm always down for go karts. But let's go around and, I mean, everybody's heard names, but let's actually go around and give a little insight to each and every one of you of what you know. Why are you starting with me? What you do and what has brought you to be who you are. I am Tristan. They call me a the architect closer. because I wrote it, the music. I know you're a guitar player, but you have to hold the mic closer. It I'll won't bite. I wrote the music. I've been writing for four years, pretty much since I started playing. And I'm a quiet talker. And my biggest inspirations are my cousin that died and my brother that has been around music since I can remember. And that's and what's driven you to be who you are as a musician due to the loss in your family? Yeah. Just, I know it's what he wanted, so I'm going to try oh, to do it for him. That's, you know, that's great. Bassist. <laughs> it's time to wake up. Uh, I'm Tony, otherwise known as Crash, because I'm a clumsy fucker. Um... <laughs> You I'm, do not let him towards the front of the stage, do you? <laughs> he normally pretends like he's falling off his jumping rope. <laughs> good, co- good cover up. Yeah, uh, I'm the bassist. Um, I've been playing for uh, roughly four or five years. Um, me and my younger brother, Tristan, and our adopted brother, uh, Tristan, otherwise known as Right Nut. Um, or big, more commonly. Um, we formed the band with our other friend, uh, JT, and we started out, you know, we were just a bunch of kids, didn't really have any experience with uh, our instruments, but that the founding members remaining in the band, uh, both the Tristans and I, and we've slowly became what we are today that's great i'm roxy i play the keyboard and i do backup vocals for the band i've been in music my entire life my family's music oriented they got me started on piano when i was eight years old so but i only took about a couple weeks of lessons to be completely honest didn't have the money for it so i just taught myself so, um, my inspiration for music, believe it or not, I've already said this, is my brother. Uh, when I was in school, I tried out for the choir. Why? Because my brother was in the choir. So I wanted to be like my brother. <laughs> and so, basically, it was him that got me started. And then I just found a love for music myself. And we have completely different styles, but that does not change the fact that he was my inspiration. Yes, he wears underwear. You wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> completely two different styles so but yeah it's, uh, my my music did start because of him and well now I guess we get to share our music together yay <laughs> <laughs> I'm Thrash I'm the drummer uh, I've been playing the drums for longer than I care to admit somewhere around 15 years <laughs> uh Inspiration came a long time ago when I got my first drum set. Me and my cousin, Sonny, we uh, started up a Pantera cover band and called ourselves Corrosive. And it was a lot of fun until Sonny passed away, like my brother was saying. And music ceased for a while until, you know, 
the last year and a half when when this really started kicking off and my youngest brother you know the architect he, he's he's really phenomenal my my middle brother tony and our adopted brother big tristan uh they they really had something special and, and it wasn't until they actually said okay it's time i want you to be a part of this that that i was able to be a part of it and, and it means a lot it's it's a lot of hard work and these boys have put in a lot of effort for it and, and there is my inspiration for today yeah i mean over the course of time that i've known y'all i mean y'all have come a long way from the beginning till up to today i do know that uh i'm tristan prentice for some reason they want to call me whiplash i hate it (laughs) i I think it's corny personally um my inspiration was my grandfather i was born out in Bartlesville, and I grew up out in Dewey, you know, tractors, horses, whatever. That's why I'm used to the heat and all that. Uh, shut up. Uh, really, the other part of playing this band is I don't know what they'd do if they didn't have somebody to fix stuff. So you're the fixer-upper. I'm the fixer-upper and the computer programmer. So he breaks shit just to fix it. He's our wires guy. Yeah, I can do anything electronically. Every time I play at a venue, especially this one, I can't help but uh, wish I had the money to buy some of this stuff. Um, yeah, uh, that's my inspiration. A little bit of future advice for any other local bands is if you get in a big fight, trust me, we've had some bad ones in this band as well. Uh, almost lost my drummer, Ben, which damn near broke my heart. I love my brothers. Uh, so become brothers when you form a band and get used to fighting a lot. Oh, this is true. I mean, yeah. That's the, well, I mean, being in a band, it's, you know, it is family. I mean, you are going to have throwdowns and, you know, knock arounds that you all just have to work through and uh, move on because it's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Especially when you cram six assholes into one vehicle. <laughs> it gets kind of stinky. Yeah. I mean, you got, like, light metal all the way around, and then I like the brutal heavy shit, and they're like, Braxton, turn that shit off. Oh, yeah. She listens to dubstep. (laughs) But anyway, my name is Braxy Goth. I'm the lead singer, front man, and head asshole. Uh, Second that. There's been an emotion for a second. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. I get um, shit when I was a little kid, like. One and two years old, I remember my dad was in a band, Thrasher. He actually met my mom when his band, Thrasher, opened up for Exodus. And uh, thusly, I was conceived a few years later <laughs> through... Nice the- name throw out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, no, I remember as a kid going to his practices and watching him play bass, so I picked up bass and, and yeah, did some choir, but when it came to bands, played bass because bass players were hard to find and, then when I moved back out here, I was just like, eh, it's like a front man not doing their jobs. So. It's always that, you know, LSD, I mean, that lead singer disorder. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a lot of it. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> you. You think he's a nice guy. You should see him in front of the mirror. <laughs> Ooh, narcissism. <laughs> mm. Not really. I mean, but, I mean, now that we all know a little bit about you, I mean, Coming from where y'all been and what y'all done in previous other bands and stuff like that, what is, I mean, to be able to be one of Tulsa's fans' favorites at Rock, Oklahoma, I mean, what's that do for the band? It gives us goosebumps to, to go from, in the short period of time we have, at least at what I feel is a short period, to go from nobody knowing who we are to, to being one of Tulsa's fan favorites. It, it, it gives you goosebumps. That's a feeling that we can't describe. You know, it, it, we can't say thank you enough to the people that support us and the fans that we've gotten. Uh, and anyone listening, a big shout out to you guys. We're here because of you, and thank you. And you know, if it, you know, places like Undercurrent and uh, the Vanguard and uh, Rum Runners. You know, there's only a few select places that, you know, that you all have a really chance of, you know, becoming Tulsa fan favorites. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, especially because y'all are, you know, from Bartlesville, which is, yep, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, we're technically not from Tulsa, but there's no scene where we're at, so we claim to hail from Tulsa, but it's still a road trip to come down here. But um, no, yeah, like you know, like you said, undercurrent. I guess Rum Runners is breaking into metal now, but um, it was really hard. We were trying to book a show there ourselves, and they didn't want to do too much heavy stuff. Um, but uh, we got to thank Jake too from the Downtown Lounge. He was a big oh, help. Yes. Jake from downtown, you know, it's a very small venue, but yeah. does a lot of a lot of shows down there, you know, no matter what yeah. genre it is. Abigail Williams was actually down there. That's one of my favorite black metal bands. But Ben actually also mentioned, too, we got to give a shout out to Keyline Magazine, too. They're they're one of our, our sponsors. We endorse them. I'm also the metal and hard rock writer for Keyline Magazine. So if you want to get your band in that uh, in the Keyline Mag, I do two articles a month and uh if you're good, I'll put you in. I am going to pick music based on quality, not just because you're a friend of mine. So, well, Shit, that leaves me out. <laughs> <laughs> but, see, this is, I mean, I mean, I mean, you with Key Lime Magazine, myself with Tulsa Rocks, I mean, I mean, this is what, you know, it's all should be about, you know, getting together and promoting as much as possible, getting the word out there. I mean, I mean, I can't thank you all enough for coming down and, you know, you know, being on the show at Undercurrent and doing an interview with Tulsa Rocks. I mean, it's, the scene went from flourishing a few years ago to dead, and it's on its way back up. But, I mean, we all just got to remember, yes, at the same time, I guess it's a competition to see who's better because everyone wants to be better. You always want to make yourself better, but at the same time, we all got to help each other get to that being better. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you always want to be one step above the next person because you know it's just a thing but at the same time we can't eat ourselves well i was talking about always being better than, than yourself constantly pushing yourself to be better no. mostly yeah others you know always the self you know yeah it's, it's something you really got to remember you know it, it's it's a competition within yourself more than it is against other people or other bands um nobody goes anywhere by themselves and that's something that needs to be remembered um, there will be other bands that you play with that will help you along the way. There's been other bands that we've played with that have helped us out and gotten us. I mean, we've, we've been able to get out of state quite a bit here recently because of such other bands, you know. Uh, and, and it's honoring. It's, it's real humbling, especially for, for our Tulsa area. Being able to play tonight with the other Tulsa fan favorite, the Joint Effect, man, that, that's a big deal for us, you know. It's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, let's, let's make Tulsa pop. Oh, let's not forget Dirty Crush, who is also a Tulsa fan favorite. Exactly. Uh, uh, Dirty Crush. Man, there's so many good bands out of the Tulsa area, and I wish I could name them all. There, I mean, there there is a lot. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of them get unnoticed just because it just happens, unfortunately. I mean, there's I've, I've come across a lot of great bands and musicians here in Tulsa. It, it's true. Uh I don't know what it is that one band does different from another or what we've done different from somebody else, uh, but I'm grateful. Well, I mean, in your in your genre, I mean, Tulsa doesn't really have that many, as you all say, metalcore, if, if I'm correct on that. That's what I've been told. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can, the only other heavier band that I can think of within Tulsa is, I don't know if they're even still around, is like Feticide. I don't think they're still around. I haven't heard from them in a while. I mean, I, know. I, I guess the, the, the other band that was from around here that we would fit in with, and I, I don't know what's going on with them exactly, but Beneath, they're pretty badass. But uh, The rumor I've heard, I think they've uh, went their own separate Disbanded, ways. yeah. Well, I, I didn't want to say anything, uh, not knowing for sure what's yeah, going on with them. That's what I'm saying. I just heard through the grapevine and stuff like that. It's just like you know they're gone their own separate ways but yeah i mean as for the the fan base it's definitely not a you know when it comes to these 21 up and shows we get fans here and there that are pretty dedicated but man every time we play the vanguard uh it's just off the wall i mean we played there first time it was 125 people and then the second time there was 225 people here's the lead, kids are just that crazy LSD kicking in right there so he's like don't tell me he's like i had to finish yeah, he had to finish. Well, had to <laughs> finish my thought. See, we, we can, we can, I'm finishing thought here. Oh, well, and speaking of the Vanguard and the all-age shows, uh, special shout-out to the Metal Boys. They know who they are. 
Uh, we love the crap out of them because they are there every underage show that they can go to. They start mosh pits. They're up right in the front there for us. They come and hang with us. They buy our gear. They sing along with our stuff. Man, I love these guys. You guys know who you are. Seriously, we love you. We can't wait to have you at another one of our shows, honestly. Yeah, I actually uh, got in trouble for uh, pulling them up on stage after our last set. <laughs> you got in trouble for doing what? I pulled them all up on stage, the whole crowd. <laughs> and, where, and where was this? At the Vanguard. At the Vanguard? <laughs> they didn't how like did it. Whole, how could you get in trouble for bringing your fans up on stage with you? I did it, like, during the last part of our song, and they were like, enslaved by fear, get off the stage now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. For, I mean, that was the end of our set, and they were rushing us off. I think we went over, like, a minute or two, so they were trying to push us, and, you know, everyone was wanting to shake hands, and they'd had a good time. But, I mean, anything y'all want to say, speak? Where's the, where, give it to the quiet one over here. He's like, <laughs> I, I'm going to apologize for our quiet members. They're uh, microphobic. It's a thing. I don't know. Uh, you put a microphone on their face and they go, uh, you know. Uh, and I, I don't know. I'm going to say some of it has to do with age because uh, our lead guitarist being 17 and our bass is, yeah, he's 17 years old. 17 years old and yeah, you know. playing I'm a, a couple years old. A yeah, a yeah. We got, we got a technical s- style of metal, and and your youngest is 17. Yeah, he's, he's got to play guitar from Guitar Hero. Guitar, he started on Guitar Hero. Yeah. Guitar Hero. He, he 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 was at at one point in time he was number one in the world on Xbox Live for writing his own songs, and then one day he calls me up and he's like, you know. 13 years old and he's like well I'm bored I don't know what to do now like he's done he's done met this milestone I'm like punk learn how to play it on a real guitar and he did and then he learned how to play it on the drums and the bass and the viola don't give him anything else to learn how to play how are you at Rocksmith (laughs) I've never tried Rocksmith never tried Rock. give this man give him a copy of Rocksmith and see what happens there was actually a point in time on Guitar Hero where he was using three different accounts because he didn't know how to move the accounts via internet, and he was second, third, and fourth place. You need to get outside, son. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I kept telling him. I used to force him outside, and he used to get so mad at me. No wonder you're into the metalcore. You have no idea what sunlight is. Oh, he made a gay guy cry by playing his techno. And I thought I was white. <laughs> yeah, he's also made, uh, he, he did, started doing some techno type stuff on uh, Guitar Hero. And uh, he recorded it, and then we were at Spencer's in Tulsa. And, and, oh, yeah, okay. He was on Do you have something to say here? I use Fruity Loops to make techno music. Yeah, Fruity okay. Loops. So he, he got it on Fruity Loops, and then we w- went to Spencer's in Tulsa. And. They had this. Uh, th- those this with water in it. I don't know. I think I think it was a cashier, but uh, this guy that was supposedly like all into like the techno scene and everything. He had this tattoo on his calf that was like "Plur, Peace, Love, Unity, and Respect" or something like that. And he started crying because he loved his techno so much. Oh my god! <laughs> That's adorable. Well, you just never know these days, so. <laughs> but I do want to thank you all for hanging out with me on this quick interview, uh, Enslaved by Fear. Thank you so very much for doing this interview with Tulsa Rocks. Thank you, Tulsa Rocks. You guys are awesome, and Tulsa is awesome. And Tulsa Rocks. <laughs> hey, yeah, keep it metal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is John from Tulsa Rocks with Enslaved by Fear. We thank you for listening in. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Deuces. Bye.